You know, in aviation, we have a kind of a nice term for somebody who's been a pilot for a long time, finally uh, departs this veil of tears. We say they've gone west. And folks, it turns out that uh, Batman has gone west. Adam West died this week. Uh, I know this may sound a little odd. Uh, by the way, this is uh, your right angle on, on Adam West here with Bill Whittle, Steve Green, and Scott Ott. I know this may sound an odd thing to say because I know last year people were saying, please, 2016, don't take anybody else from us, please. You know, we lost so many important people, David Bowie and all, and all the rest of these major artists. And Adam West certainly was not a major artist. I think that's one thing we can all agree on. But I wanted to talk about, uh, about Adam West uh, today because um, Batman was such an influential part of my life, and I... I've been saying for such a long time that the pop culture programs us. And Adam West did a, a second turn uh, on Family Guy for many years in which he played a deranged lunatic, basically. And I don't even want to talk about that anymore because that's what's going into kids' heads today. But when I was a kid and when Steve and Scott were younger, what we were getting into our heads from Batman was being delivered by this strange man, uh, Adam West, who I don't think ever really got over the role. Uh, but everything he said on that show, I believed as a kid. I, I thought the whole thing was completely serious, and obviously it was very campy. But watching it again as an adult, I'm just struck by how decent the character was and how decent the world he, he wanted to live in was. Uh, Steve, there's so much to say about this. Uh, I think um, my favorite thing, there's so many favorite things, but there, there's a couple of cases where, where Batman would burst into the room and there'd be the Riddler and the Joker or something, and he would go, criminals. Just to, <laughs> you know, just the revulsion of it. Criminals. You filthy criminals. Surrender! You criminals! You abominable outlaws. Uh, it, 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 yeah. it, it programs children to think that crime is bad and that a good citizen does good citizen things thank you citizen no yeah. you don't know uh, 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 their their helicopters crashed or something and it's like uh robin says should we uh batman should we should we call a cab and he says no robin not at this time of day traffic's already bad enough downtown and and, <laughs> and i know that people laughed at that but but there's something about it that's not that's not funny that's awesome. adam west was playing a square but he didn't mock him and he didn't yeah and he didn't sneer at him, and he didn't comment on him. He played him as if he were, in fact, this civic-minded giant who's just built out of decency. Capitalists like myself who carry large sums of money often have such safety contrivances. Oh, boy. Eh, it's such a... I don't want to overcomplicate this, but, uh, okay. Oh, go ahead. Adam West Batman is... Uh, it's like losing your virginity. It might not have been the best, but you always remember your first. And okay. I, I grew up on Adam West Batman. Uh, at kindergarten, every day I would come home, turn on uh, one of our two independent stations before cable, I can't remember which one it was, and I would watch Batman and Ultraman and the Monsters. And it was always Batman first. And, and it was such a thrill. And I didn't get... I didn't get the humor. I got what you were talking about. I got the decency. I went back and watched some clips now as an adult, and oh boy, it is so much funnier than than even I remembered from my uh, from my twenties. Uh, there's a there's a great clip. He's talking to, uh, to 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 Catwoman, and he says, "You give me a strange feeling in my utility belt." In just that <laughs> that Adam West deadpan, just beautiful stuff. The, uh, the 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 killer bee trap that Robin got caught up in. With you know the, the 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 fake bee that was made out of pipe cleaner and, and whatever the hell else it was, it was so good and it the, the genius of that show is yeah I know they were playing it for laughs because you know all the the the, the cool sixties uh, hippies got to laugh at the square but we weren't laughing at him and you know what even today we can laugh at the uh, we can, we can laugh at the cheesy fights we can we can we we can laugh at the the the, the costumes or, or whatever but we never laugh at Batman because whatever Adam West may have been as a human being he brought that decency that made the camp actually effective speaking of the double entendre Steve here's my favorite example of a double entendre from Batman in terms oh, no. of the kind of thing you never got when you're a little kid but, but yeah. when you see it as an adult here watch this you know something Batman what's that Robin she looks very pretty when she's asleep I thought you might eventually notice that that single statement indicates to me the first oncoming thrust of manhood, old chum. 
Scotty, as you know, um, uh, as you know, you should know since it's your life, uh, but you were writing comedy at Scrapple Face for many years. You still write an awful lot of comedy, and comedy is a tough thing to do. You know, uh, drama is easy, comedy is hard. And there is a dryness um, to the to this delivery that he had that was just absolutely perfect. And I'm just going to play very quickly my favorite two examples, just back to back. They're very fast, but to me, this is the essence of of Adam West's actual genius. Ringside table, Batman. Uh, just look at the thanks. I'll stand at the bar. I shouldn't wish to attract attention. Let's go, but inconspicuously through the window. It's bone dry, it's hilariously funny, and you know, having been in show business and having dealt with actors for a while, Scott, I think he believed it. I do, and and there's some evidence that he did because, uh, you know, the, I don't want to say particularly dark side of him, but apparently he and Frank Gorshin went to an orgy and they were thrown out of an orgy because they were the coolest guys in the world for two years, the, the Batman cast. Because they couldn't drop their characters. You know, Adam West was Batman and, and, and Gorshin was the Riddler at this orgy. But I, my understanding is that when, um, was when they uh, did the Batman re uh, reboot with uh, um, Keaton, Michael Keaton back, I was here at 89 or so, that Adam West actually seriously thought he was up for the role and had a good chance for the role and, and, and perhaps should have gotten the role. I don't know if the guy was completely sane, but, but there was an incredible, unbelievable perception of where the comedy was in, in this role. Yeah, and I, and I think to, to really sell comedy, the actor and the writer and really everybody involved in it have to actually like, if not love, the character. And, uh, you know, the, the example that I think of is uh, with Norman Lear and Archie Bunker. Well, you know, if you read Norman Lear's memoir, you'd find out that Archie Bunker was basically Norman Lear's dad. And Norman Lear's dad didn't sound like a great guy. You know, overall, he sounded like a, a, you know, a blustering, bombastic kind of character. But Norman Lear had this fundamental love for his dad. And the reason why Archie Bunker worked is that even though Norman Lear spent years mocking what Archie Bunker believed, at the heart of it, he loved the guy. And I think that's the same thing with Batman. It's like he's not going to he he's not going to get into that self-deprecating, tearing down the character. For example, why the Scooby Doo movie did not work. The reason why the Scooby Doo movie did not work is that they didn't allow us to suspend disbelief and stay in the characters. And the fundamental aspect of Scooby Doo is that there are never any real ghosts. You know, and so, and they completely blew that out of the water by having some real supernatural thing happening in a movie. You have to respect the character. You have to love the character. And I think Adam West, for all his human foibles, um, I think he genuinely loved the character. And that, because of that, he was able to pull it off with what should be central to every great piece of drama, and that is pathos. Yes, oh, that's exactly well right. Um, Mark Twain was talking about um, American humor and especially about a certain kind of American humor, storytelling humor, the kind of thing that he, that he did so well. And he said the essence of this is to, is to tell the story in such a way that you do not see anything remotely funny about it whatsoever, just to be 100% absolutely committed to it. And in an age of snark and cynicism where nothing is sacred here, nothing, nothing, nothing is... is uh, as a matter of fact, the more sacred it is, the more the left has to mock it and tear it down. I watched that show as a boy, and I watched that show as a man, and I never saw Adam West tear down the idea of civic responsibility that crime doesn't pay. I never saw him commenting on or sneering on any of those things. He always struck me as, as, as an actor, as a person, that he really did believe it. They may be drinkers, Robin, but they're also human beings. It's a low neighborhood full of rum pots. They're used to curious sights, which they attribute to alcoholic delusion. And if it turned out that Adam West took the bat suit home and wore it every day for the rest of his life, you know, while he's eating TV dinners at home, if that's what it turned out to be, I don't care. I don't care. That man had a profound effect on my life. When I was a little boy, I would stand at the bottom of our driveway. I had a bat cowl. I had the bat suit. I had the bat everything. I had a little bat uniform, and I'd stand there on the edge of the street with my hands on my hips protecting the neighborhood right after school for an hour or so just in case you know any evil doers or criminals would show up in my um in my uh in my driveway 
I'd love to tell you we'll be able to see him uh, next time, uh, same bat time, same bat station. Uh, but Adam's gone west. I hope wherever he is, he's happy. He certainly made a bunch of us very happy. And finally, for a character who was written as maybe the biggest square in the history of television, uh, you can't be a square and do the Batusi the way this guy does. Yeah.